Welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. We would really appreciate if you could give us a 5-star rating and leave a glowing review in the app where you are listening to these podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts and others. It will help us to guide more people to the podcast. Thank you. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 164 days, Ukraine resists the forces of the Russian invasion. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky informed about significant worsening of the situation around the Zaporizhian nuclear power plant this week. He reminded that Russia has become the first in the world to use a nuclear power plant for terror. Zelensky pointed out that despite the fact that Russian shelling of the nuclear plant is one of the most dangerous crimes against Ukrainians and all Europeans against the right to life of every person. For some reason there is no report or even a simple notification from Amnesty International about it. Quote, a very eloquent silence which once again indicates the manipulative selectivity of this organization. Unquote. Previously, the head of Amnesty International Ukraine, Oksana Pokalchuk, announced her resignation. The reason is the organization's report prepared by the central office in London, in which Amnesty says that the tactics that the armed forces of Ukraine use to defend the country endanger Ukrainian civilians. Quote, Even yesterday I had a naive hope that I could fix everything, that we will hold at least 200 meetings but explain, get through, convey our opinion. And the text will be deleted, and another one will appear instead. Today I realize that this will not happen, unquote, Pokalchuk said on her Facebook. She noted that such important reports must contain data about the other side of the war, in particular about who started it. Russia. The Times published an editorial regarding the situation with the Amnesty International accusations reports Ukrainska Pravda. The Times says that Amnesty International has become a mouthpiece for the propaganda of Vladimir Putin's regime slandering the victims of Russian aggression. They point out that Amnesty International, dedicated to covering the cases of political prisoners, this week set out to undermine its own credibility. Quote, Members of the public who donate generously of money and time, believing that they are helping victims of persecution, must stop. Once a respected humanitarian organization, Amnesty now shows a sad indifference to oppression. Having gone soft on crime and fascism, it should have the decency to leave the scene." Unquote. The media stresses that Ukrainian forces are based in residential areas because they have been attacked by Russian troops. This is an established method of Russian military operations in Chechnya and Syria, as well as in Ukraine. Instead, Ukrainian forces courageously resist, helping civilians to leave dangerous areas. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan believes that the agreement to unblock grain exports from Ukrainian ports creates a favorable ground for broader negotiations between Kyiv and Moscow, reports European Pravda. Erdogan expressed his readiness to host a meeting between Putin and Zelensky in Istanbul. He added that Ankara will continue to promote dialogue with Russia in all areas to support regional and global stability. Prior, Turkey agreed to partial payment for Russian gas in rubles and some of the Turkish banks will work with Russian credit card system Mir, which isn't operating in other countries due to sanctions. According to Bloomberg, Putin sees the Turkish president as a potential mediator in peace talks with Ukraine and a partner in circumventing Western sanctions in the energy and financial sectors. Volodymyr Zelensky in his video address said that this week the armed forces of Ukraine and Ukraine's intelligence have achieved powerful results in destroying the logistics of the Russian army and the rare bases of the invaders. 
he emphasized that every strike on the enemy's ammunition depots, on their command posts, on accumulations of Russian equipment saves the lives of all of Ukrainians, the lives of Ukrainian military and civilians. Zelensky thanked the partners, everyone who supplies Ukraine with the necessary weapons. All of them are used as accurately and beneficially as possible for the overall strategy of Ukraine's defense. The general staff of Ukraine informs that the Russian forces are trying to advance at various points in the Donetsk region, reports Grund Media. In the Slovensk direction, the enemy led offensive battles in the area of Bohorodichne and Dolina, without success. In the Kramatorsk direction, the Russian forces tried to advance towards Verkhnokamenske, but failed and retreated. In the direction of Bakhmut, the Russian troops conducted assault operations in the directions of Volodymyrivka, Yakovlivka, Pokrovske, Bakhmut, Vidrodzhenya Varshina, Novoluhanske and Zaitseve. Ukrainian defenders held their positions and pushed the invaders back. Collaborator with Russian occupational authorities in the city of Nova Kahovka, Kherson region, Vitaly Gura died in the hospital after being shot, reports Ukrainska Pravda. According to the Russian media, the so-called deputy head of local administration was attacked near his home and shot several times, presumably from Makarov's gun. Mariupol City Council of Ukraine informs that the Russian occupiers are planning to arrange a show trial of captured Ukrainian military in the city, reports TSN UA. At the moment, they are installing prison bars on the stage of the Mariupol Chamber Philharmonic, where the trial will be held. Mariupol Mayor Vadim Boychenko called on the UN and the Red Cross to intervene in the situation. The Prosecutor General's Office of Ukraine informs that 361 children were killed, more than 700 wounded amid Russian invasion, reports Slovo Idilo. These figures are not final since work is underway to establish them in places of active hostilities in temporary occupied and in recently liberated territories. Our Patreon supporters get access to a cool new series on wartime life in Ukraine. To join the club, follow the link in the description below. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine. Thank you.